Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are in our series of lessons on how to have a successful career in engineering. Now the lessons that we're fixing to be going into are lessons associated with writing a resume, interviewing for a job, making a good impression, getting that job you really want. But I wanted to break in here with just a really short lesson today because I've got a lot of questions about like how do you know what you want to do or how do you know where you want to go or pick in the right company. So before I go into how to write a resume and how to interview for a job, we ought to talk about you better figure out what you want to do first because I hadn't thought about that but those were some really good questions that I got so uh, you know there's a lot of different engineering fields that you might be in you might be in mechanical engineering electrical engineering computer science but I think no matter which field of engineering that you're in I think what I'm going to tell you here would help you decide uh, maybe the right job that you should be going for and the first thing that you're really going to have to decide is are you going to want to work for a big company or are you going to want to work for a small company and there can be pros and cons to both of them let me say uh, also before I get started that that probably and this is a little bit upside down from what you might be expecting probably the least important thing about picking where you want to work and what you want to do is the salary okay because if you're an engineer chances are you're going to be paid very well but the difference between company A paying you sixty seven thousand dollars a year versus company B paying you sixty two thousand dollars a year or hundred and thirty versus hundred and twenty or fifty five versus fifty two wherever you are in there that difference in money really is not going to make any difference in your happiness What's going to really matter a lot more than that is having a job that you love. Having a job that when you get up in the morning you can't wait to get in there to your job. That's a lot more money than, uh, that's a lot more important in your happiness than how much money you make. And that's one of the things that people do is it's just like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get $67,000 from this one, but I'm going to get $67,250 for this job. I'm going to go for the more, uh, the more pay. Bad mistake. Find the job that you're going to love how much you make is going to be secondary to that as far as what your happiness is going to be. Okay, with that said, you're going to have to choose now between a large company and a small company. Okay, what are some, and, and I can't tell you what's right for you, but I can tell you what it's like, and just listen and kind of think what, uh, you know, what, what kind of person you are and what would be attractive to you. Some of the characteristics I think of, of working for a big company. First of all, there's more stability. Uh, in most cases, there's more stability in a large company. So you're probably going to have your, your job is going to be very well defined. You're going to come in. You're going to know what the company expects from you. You're going to know what you should be doing and you're going to know how you should be doing it. And so it's very comforting for a person who likes structure. If you're a person that likes to have a routine and likes to have things very organized and everything in its place you'll probably like a big company because everything is kind of laid out for you so very structured very organized high degree of stability in a big company you don't come in every day and find a bunch of surprises typically usually in a large company there's better salary so again we say salary isn't that important but probably a big company will pay you more initially than a small company that's not always the case but I think that's uh, that's generally the case okay uh, in a big company it's a lot more likely that you're going to have a re the resources that you need to get the job done and so in a big company a lot of times you're not having to bootstrap if you're responsible for testing the integrated circuits coming out of the fabrication facility in Intel chances are you're going to have the latest and greatest equipment chances are you're going to have the quality of equipment and the quantity of equipment that you need to get the job done so you're not having to kind of kind of wire things together with 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 bailing wire or you know, with bailing wire and and duct tape you're going to have the resources that you need to get the job done okay uh, the 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 other thing about that's kind of a nice thing about a big company in a big company a lot of times you can change uh, you can change jobs without changing companies that if you work at a big company like Intel or Apple or Texas Instruments there's a whole 
whole lot of jobs within that company and you can do something for a few years and maybe get tired of it you can move over and do something different so there's a lot of job mobility within big companies that give you the chance to kind of find your niche and find your place so so these these are some great things about big companies and again I've worked for really big companies and I've worked for very small companies thing about big companies is more stability stability in your salary you have the resources to get your job done and you can move around inside the company uh, some of the maybe not so great things about a about a big company is there tends to be a lot less flexibility they sort of want they have a way that they do things and they want you to do things their way now it's not impossible to change their way but it's sort of like a you know think of a think of a big company as sort of like an ocean liner or a train you know it's kind of hard to change there's a lot of momentum and it's kind of hard to change the direction there and so if you're a guy that wants to shake things up and really redefine things and turn things upside down you're going to be very frustrated at a big company because things change slowly and there's the way they do things and they don't really uh, uh, have an easy way to change things so there's a little bit less or there's quite a bit less flexibility in a big company the big companies are usually not open to changing things so this is this is their test system this is their test department this is the way testing is done and so a lot of times there's not a lot of flexibility there's the way things are done and you should do things that way a lot of times in big companies they're not open to new ideas like you might have a radical idea it might be a great idea it's probably going to be hard to get people to listen to you because a lot of times you know it's like no one ever gets fired in a big company by doing things the safe way and a lot of people that are in large companies tend to be risk averse and all they want to do is work out their days get their retirement and not rock the boat and so uh, a lot of times in a big company you'll find that that there can be a hesitancy to being open to uh, to new ideas the other downside to a big company is is that a lot of times there's kind of limited upside potential you're going to have a really nice salary you might have a really nice retirement you might have a really nice 401k plan you might have a nice career development where you get raises along the way but the chances are you're not going to just all of a sudden become a millionaire you're not going to just you know there's not going to be huge upside potential because if a company's large it's going to be very hard for them to double in size and if they don't double in size then it's not like there's going to be new organizations and new opportunities for promotion so kind of in a in a big company limited upside that you've got to wait your turn you got to pay your dues you've got to earn that promotion and your promotions are going to be few and far between there's not going to be chances to just really hugely share in the upside uh, you know there's usually some little stock options and things like that but but you're not going to just really enjoy the potential of enormous upside but then again there's not the enormous downside so it's sort of like the ocean liner just going across the ocean is what a big company is a lot of great things about that okay let's talk about a small company small company is a lot less stable and a lot less stability in the job you might come in in the morning and you might find out that things radically changed overnight you might find out that your job has been completely redefined you might find out that your job has been eliminated so so there's a lot of instability in a small company and if that's gonna if you're a worrier and if you're a person who struggles with change then you might find yourself under a lot of stress in a small company uh, there's uh, there's a lot less stability uh, uh, but uh, you know but if you're a person who uh, who enjoys that type of thing you might you might find the small company very stimulating uh, chances are at a small company you're going to have a lower initial salary but there's going to be a greater upside potential you have a greater opportunity to share in the success of the company so if you join a company with 50 people that are working on getting their first big product out and that product gets out and they need to go from a from a company of 50 people to being a company of 150 people that's going to be a lot of opportunities opportunities for growth new organizations promotions your chance to sort of be in on the on the ground floor and much easier much more easily move up the ladder that you could come into a small company you know you could be a vice president of the company in three or four years you come into a big company 
almost impossible. So, so with a small company, there's more upside, uh, uh, more upside potential because you you got that ch chance to really come in on the ground floor. Also, you've got a chance to to really sort of define the corporate culture. You're one of the few guys in there, and you can really part uh, be part of defining what the company uh, the, what the company uh, really uh, really is and and really is about. And so, it's it's a much more dynamic environment. A, a, a lot less stability that might uh, appeal to a lot of pressure a lot of people I think in a small company a lot of times there can be a lot more pressure I think in a large company you can put yourself under pressure and the company can put you under pressure but usually it's like kind of like are you going to get an attaboy are you not going to get an attaboy will you get a bonus how big will your bonus be it's little things like that and and maybe in a big company less that uh, fear that you know you know your organization's going to you know that that that, that you're going to just get hit with a that you're going to get hit with a disaster so i think small companies there tends to be more pressure and i think in small companies there can be more expectations on you in a small company it, it's probably more likely that you're going to be one person that's being asked to do the the work of two people and a lot of times with a small company it's a matter of survival okay that if this company's going to survive we got to get this product out and if we're going to get this product out, out everyone's going to be working till midnight so there's that type of dynamic in a, you know in a in a small company so i think with this picking a, what company you want to work for a small company or a big company i think what you got to ask yourself is you know just think about your life are you a risk taker if you're a risk taker and really like that adrenaline that comes from taking risk you're going to thrive in uh, in a small company if you're not a risk taker and you like everything in its place and you like everything laid out and you like everything predictable you're going to love a large company uh, you know one of the things do you like change or you like stability do you like to come in and just have your world rocked every day or do you like things that are very stable if you like your world rocking and rolling around and everything changing and dynamic you're going to want to work for a small company if you like stability you're going to want to work for a for a big company so another thing I just sort of give you an analogy is uh, you're going to spend a day on the water had you rather be in a canoe on a smooth lake fishing all day you know fishing or would you rather go white water rafting rafting if you'd like to sit in the boat and fish you probably would like a, a big company better if you'd like to go white water rafting you would like to go uh, you would like to uh, work for a small company and really that's a pretty good pretty good demonstration because if you're a guy that really likes things smooth and fishing you'd be terrified of going white water rafting but if you love the adventure of white water rafting you'd probably be bored to death uh, in a canoe fishing so I hope this helps I'm gonna make another quick video after this but the first thing that you need to do is you need to decide what are you more suited for big company or small company hope this is helping you think put your comments down below I would really love to hear from you like to kind of see if this makes sense and and if you uh, if this help helps make your uh, help you make a decision uh, if you like this think about giving us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel think about sharing this with other people okay this is Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com and I will talk to you guys later